Hi, my name is Chris Crane, and I'm the Aquarium Manager here at the Meadows Center. Today we're demonstrating how we collect food for the threatened and endangered species that we have on display in our aquarium. Fountain darters, San Marcos salamanders, and Texas blind salamanders all feed on aquatic invertebrates, and since they're endemic to this area, they'll happily feed on the ones we catch for them here. So I'm going to collect some, and we're going to have an in-depth look at what I catch, learn about the important role that aquatic invertebrates play in the ecosystem here, and show you how looking at the different kinds you find in a body of water can tell you about its suitability for other types of aquatic life, and even be an indicator of pollution. So I'm here on the edge of Spring Lake, and I'm going to be collecting scuds to feed inside of our aquarium. Scuds, or amphipods, are crustaceans similar to tiny shrimp, and they live on top of floating vegetation. So, first, I'm going to tap the top of the water to scare away any fish that might be hanging out at the surface. And then I'm going to scoop up mats of this floating algae. Spring Lake is a special research and conservation site and is protected from public fishing. Researchers and administrators at the Meadows Center carefully monitor and factor in our collection of aquatic invertebrates to ensure our impact on the ecosystem is minimal. Please don't come to Spring Lake with the net to fill up your home aquarium. We only use the bugs we collect to feed our endangered species. So that was a pretty good haul we just had. We're going to use the bugs inside of this bucket to feed our salamanders and our fountain darters. And we're going to add this aerator into the bucket to ensure that our bugs have enough oxygen to last the entire week. So I'm going to use this turkey baster to extract the scuds from around the edge of the bucket. This is the result of our sampling today, a huge amount of scuds. Scuds are good indicator species, especially if they are found in large numbers. The presence of indicator species can help us tell how healthy an ecosystem is. Indicator species disappear when an environment is heavily disrupted or polluted. In the case of local streams and ponds, you can actually collect your own sample with the net and bucket and identify the different kinds of aquatic invertebrates you find. Along with this video, we're posting a link to a guide to common aquatic invertebrate indicator species. Not only can it be helpful to identify the different indicator species and monitor their presence to determine the health of local freshwater bodies, but it's also fun to explore the many different kinds of cool bugs you can find. You know, people come here and go on the boat rides, they look at the fish and the turtles and see the salamanders in the aquarium, but they're only seeing a tiny fraction of the diversity of animal life in the lake. Pretty much every square inch of lake bed and every plant is teeming with dozens of different kinds of insects, crustaceans, mollusks, and other invertebrates. And they are vital to the ecosystem of the springs. They break down organic matter, maintain a balanced diversity of different species so the lake doesn't become overrun with a single type of bug, like mosquitoes, and are the primary food source for many of our fish. Finally, I'm going to show you some of the different kinds of aquatic invertebrates I caught today. We catch a lot of bugs besides scuds when we gather algae. Some of them make good feeders, and others we throw back. As we go through the different kinds, I'll also identify which ones are indicator species. These are mayfly larvae. They eventually shed their exoskeleton and grow wings, becoming air-breathing flying insects as adults. They are an excellent indicator species because they need unpolluted flowing water with high oxygen levels. This very active swimming dot is an aquatic mite, another type that thrives in unpolluted water. Similar to the mayfly larva is the damselfly larva. Adult damselflies look a lot like smaller dragonflies and are often vivid blue or green. These common local types have feather-like gills sticking out of their backside. Since they absorb oxygen from the water, they are somewhat sensitive to pollution. All of these aquatic invertebrates are good indicator species. If you find them, it's a sign that the water isn't too polluted. 
This big round invertebrate is a creeping water bug larva. They are less sensitive to changes in water oxygen levels because they actually breathe air through the backside. This one even carries a bubble of air under its carapace while it dives down to find other bugs and even small fish to prey on. The planaria, or flatworms that crawl along the bottom here, are important decomposers that help break down organic matter, but they are very tough and can stand bad water conditions, so they're not a very good indicator species. Thanks for joining me on this exploration of the smaller inhabitants of Spring Lake. Be sure and check out the post description for some water bug related activity guides. And please consider buying an annual pass or gift certificate for the glass bottom boat rides or even making a donation. Links to those are in the video description. Now more than ever, we need your support to keep our operation going until we can reopen for public activities. Thanks again and be on the lookout for more videos from the Spring Lake Aquarium.